Number 9. Colacanth. It may seem odd to posit that creatures who died potentially thousands or millions of years ago may actually still be alive in the modern day. But there has been proof of this happening in the past, including with creatures that were believed to have been extinct for 65 million years. In this case, the Colacanth. This fish was born during the Cretaceous period, back when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And by the time the modern age arrived, it was just assumed that the Colacanth was extinct. Fossils of the creature were found and no other fish in the water that we knew of looked like it, which was more than enough evidence for one to assume that it was truly gone from the world. Yet the opposite was true. In 1938, a marine biologist in Africa found this long dead fish while looking through a fisherman's hall. Not only was it a colacanth, it looked exactly like the fossils that were found of its kind. So now you might question how we missed a fish like this being alive all this time. The answer might just be the simplest of all space. There's a lot of places in the ocean, and the colacanth is thought to live in somewhat deep waters, which makes it incredible that it was caught at all. Eventually, another species of colacanth was found in Indonesia, further proving that the species is alive and well. So to answer your question, if a fish from 65 million years ago was found in the oceans of the world alive after all this time, what else could be out there that was believed extinct? Number 8. Saber-toothed Tiger there are many legendary cats who exist in this modern age, but none of them compare to the power and the ability that the saber-toothed tiger once had. These massive cats were the ancestors to what exists today in many ways, and yet they were more aggressive, more powerful, and able to do things even lions and tigers can't dream of. The saber-toothed tiger was fierce, mighty, fast, and had a killer instinct that everyone feared. Its iconic fangs were nearly a foot long, almost guaranteeing death to any bit by them. But their fangs weren't the only thing lethal about them. Their speed made prey seem slow compared to them, and they would use their strong hind legs to pounce on their opponents, then use their muscles to pin them to the ground to ensure that the final strike was done unopposed. Officially, saber-toothed tigers died out during the Ice Age. However, there may have been claims and sightings of them in the modern day. While no definitive proof has been found, that does not mean that one might not be out there waiting for its next meal. Number 7. Thylacine The thylacine, or the Tasmanian tiger or wolf, was one of the most feared animals in all of Australia and New Zealand at one point in time. Which brings us to the sad fact that they were a more recent extinction, as they were wiped out within the last century. Despite being part of the marsupial family, these creatures were apex predators, able to roam the land and get food without much pushback, which turned out to be their undoing. They were a thorn in the side of the people living there, mainly because the thylacine would target their livestock. Thus, the people of the nations came together and straight up wiped out the population in full, or at least that's the claim. Reports of thylacine have been brought up over the years, including some getting video footage of them still being alive. Other pieces of proof have been offered as well. If you're thinking, wait a minute, how could they still be alive if they were declared extinct in 1936? And the answer is that people can't look everywhere for all the animals all at once. Plus, Australia has a massive region known as the Outback that isn't openly colonized by people. So thus, they could be slowly repopulating there in theory. Number 6. Short-Faced Bear the Ice Age was once home to a bear that was much bigger, much heavier, and much more aggressive than the ones today. It was known as the Short-Faced Bear, and though it's been extinct for 10,000 years, there are those who swear it's still alive today. In terms of scale, it was over 13 feet tall when it was standing on its back legs, which is 3 feet taller than the biggest bears today. Their weight also had a huge difference, as bears can weigh at almost 800 pounds, yet in the case of the short-faced bear, it weighed around 2,000. It used that size and weight to be a dominant predator during its time. It would go and find bison and horses to hunt down and eat, which it could catch up to just by running thanks to the long legs the bear had, thus not needing to rely on sneak attacks. There have been reports in modern times of a giant bear that was unlike anything others had seen before. The Inuit people, for example, took down a bear that was unlike anything around, and they even called naturalist Robert McFarlane to examine it, and his examination proved it wasn't a regular bear. The native people are one of the loudest in their beliefs that the short-faced bear could still be alive, though it's hard to say for sure if that's true. 
Number five, Megalania. In Australia during the Ice Age, there was a creature that roamed the outback as the apex predator of the land. It was a massive lizard known as the Megalania. This mother lizard was 23 feet long and was said to have a mouth full of teeth that were not only sharp, but they were also extremely venomous, thus ensuring it was an even deadlier apex predator. What really made the Megalania so dangerous was that it didn't care what it ate. Instead, it would just go for anything in range and devour it. And this included the earliest settlers of the land. So much so that Aboriginal folklore still talks about the Megalania as something to be feared. There are many reports that say that there are still some Megalania in the Australian outback today, with many reports citing lizard tracks near spots where cattle were attacked. Since they originally lived in the outback, it's not impossible that they could still reside somewhere within it. Number 4. The Moa the moa was a flightless bird said to have grown over 12 feet tall at its peak thanks to its long neck and could weigh over a ton at times. Interestingly enough, the moa was a very isolated bird. It lived on an island off the coast of New Zealand and would eat plants for sustenance. The moa soon met their doom though, as Polynesian settlers came to the New Zealand islands and wiped out the moa for various reasons. But whether that was actually true is still somewhat up for debate. As many who go to the island the moa lived on swear they sometimes hear bird calls that are unlike anything they've ever heard before, or see tracks that are moa-shaped. These pieces of evidence seem to indicate that the moa isn't quite as gone as people think. There have been sightings of the bird for at least the last 100 plus years, including ones as recent as 2008. Though the evidence provided was debunked, it's still something that many people are curious about and are looking into in order to see if the moa still really is alive. Number 3. Woolly Mammoth The woolly mammoth stands as the most recognizable animal of the Ice Age, and though they have been extinct for more than 8,000 years, there are still some who think they might still be alive. This is not just random speculation too. In the 1920s, a Frenchman heard tale of a sighting of a woolly mammoth, noting the following. It was a huge elephant with big white tusks that were very curved. Its hair was a dark chestnut color as far as I could see. It had fairly long hair on the hindquarters, but it seemed shorter on the front. I must say I had no idea there were such big elephants. A second beast was around, it seemed to be at least as big as the first. The reason this caught many people's attention is that it does seem to describe the woolly mammoth, as elephants do have hair in the modern age, but not to that thickness. The hair on their bodies actually made it so they could survive the frigid cold of the world wherever they roamed. Another interesting piece of information you should know is that two decades later, a woolly mammoth was found in a block of ice completely intact. So if they are still out there, why haven't we spotted them? The answer is their body structure and intent. They thrived during the Ice Age because they could survive the cold, and right now on Earth the coldest places are in Russia, Siberia, and the Arctic and Antarctic. While Russia is populated, the others aren't, and not many people travel there. Plus, the mammoths were nomadic, and given the massive area these places cover, it's not too far of a stretch to say that they could be roaming around in places that no one really goes. And obviously, because the areas are snow-ridden, the tracks they would leave behind would be covered up. Number 2. Javin Tiger You might not think that big cats die out too often in modern times, but you'd be wrong, and the Javin Tiger is a great example of this. This tiger was found in Indonesia on the island of Java, where it got its name. But this island was also its downfall. You see, the island ensured that hunters could go there and kill the tigers with little issue, and thus they were soon wiped out. Officially, they went unseen in 1976, and by 1994 they were declared extinct. But that was hardly the last time they were spotted. In fact, groups of them were said to still exist. A local environmentalist has cautiously said that he's found a lot of proof that this tiger is not gone from the world just yet and seeks to find them no matter what. Number 1. Megalodon Sharks have been a large part of the oceans dating all the way back to the dinosaurs. However, the biggest of them all was the Megalodon, which was not only the largest shark ever, even compared to modern sharks like the whale shark, but it was the most aggressive and the most dangerous. When they were definitively alive, they were the apex predator of the ancient waters, and were said to have no true predators given their size and power, and for good reason too. Their teeth were double the length of great white sharks, coming in at around 7 inches per tooth, which they allegedly used to eat about 2 tons of food a day. 
Eventually, between the loss of life in the oceans and certain extinction-level events, the Megalodon was said to be wiped out. Yet people think it might still be alive for the same reason that other long-lost creatures have been found in the waters of the world. Mainly that the ocean is a big place and there are areas we haven't mapped out yet. So in theory, it could be possible for the world's largest shark to still be out there somewhere. Arguably one of the most widespread fears in the world, arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. One of the reasons that many people have this fear is because they don't like bugs or arachnids, of which spiders are obviously one of them. People with arachnophobia can't even look at pictures of spiders, and they can get big. Oftentimes, what trips people out about spiders is that they can come in all shapes, sizes, and colors and appear in your home without warning or even really making a sound. People can even wake up in a perfectly secure home and find a spider on their wall or even on them, which obviously just ratchets up the fear even more. It also doesn't help matters that spiders can at times be very venomous. Bites can even kill people depending on the species. What kind of freaks people out most if they encounter a spider is that they just start running around like crazy. While it may seem like a low-key fear, it should be noted that if you have this in a country where staying inside most of the day is not an option, it can be a crippling thing. Spiders are often found on the ground, in trees, and they've even been known to rain down from the sky. That's terrifying. There have even been cases of them covering entire fields in spiderwebs, showing that they can truly be anywhere and thus are a fear that's kind of understandable. Fun fact, there's a movie called Arachnophobia and it fully exploits the fear of spiders. So if you have arachnophobia, I do not recommend watching that movie. Number 9. Aerophobia On the surface, aerophobia might seem like one that is rather easy to combat. It's the fear of flying. But you're thinking about this all wrong, because at times flying is the only way to get somewhere. For example, imagine having aerophobia on a job where you need to travel across the country in quick time, meaning driving or taking a train really wouldn't be an option, or one where you need to fly all over the world. Having a fear of flying can literally cost you that job. Or what about visiting family members or just going on a tropical getaway? And if you have never seen a person with aerophobia, the intensity in which they try and not get on the plane or panic once they are in it is no laughing matter. What's more, it even goes beyond just basic fear of flying. Sometimes it's as simple as being afraid of fresh air or drafts of air because you don't know where they come from at times. If that wasn't bad enough, depending on the level of fear within the person, they can even have a panic attack just from mentioning flying or an airplane, which shows that while this may be a basic fear, it's one that can be rather devastating to a person. And now for number eight, but first, do you have one of these phobias? And if so, which one? Do you have any advice for people that might be dealing with one of these phobias? Let us know in the comments below, and then be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 8. Nyctophobia In the world today, day and night isn't just something we have, it's a vital part of the world itself. Without night and the darkness it brings, the world would suffer, and more than likely overheat because there'd be nothing to cool it down. I mean, we need day and night to survive. Our whole biological rhythm needs it. But for those with nyctophobia, the coming of night brings forth all the fear that could possibly be within oneself, as it's the fear of the dark. On one hand, this is a very common fear among children who see monsters and moving shadows and have to sleep with a nightlight on to get through the night. Were you like this as a kid? I think we've all kind of been there. And it's not a joke of a fear, because as you hopefully know, darkness comes in many forms, and it can happen in places you wouldn't expect. Nyctophobia produces symptoms beyond the normal instinctive parameters, such as breathlessness, excessive sweating, nausea, dry mouth, feeling sick, shaking, heart palpitations, inability to speak or think clearly, or sensations of detachment from reality and death. The fear can play tricks with your mind and make you think you're in danger, which will make you react in various ways that could be detrimental. Plus, if you try and stay awake to fight the darkness, you'll be hurting your body in the long run because it really does need sleep. It also means that going into places like closets, dark tunnels, and other places without natural light will be a no-go because the person just won't risk being in the darkness. Number 7. Glossophobia If you're unaware of this particular phobia, don't be alarmed. It's simply the fear of public speaking, which may be a phobia that you aren't really sure is really worthy of being called scary. And yet for those who have this particular fear, it's crippling in ways that you can't possibly understand. Think of it like this. Imagine you're with a group of friends. 
What do you do with them? More than likely, you decide to go and talk with them about recent events, what's going on in their lives, etc. But if you had glossophobia, you more than likely wouldn't be able to do that. Because while most people think that fear of public speaking means going up in front of a large crowd to talk, it can be just as simple as talking in front of friends or family. The anxiety that builds up in them makes it hard to talk in small groups, just as much as it is about being in front of large crowds. What's more, the fear and anxiety can be so crippling that they'll literally break down into tears because they just can't do it. And that can be a powerful motivator to not try and do it again. Number six, claustrophobia. One of the more classic phobias, if you will, claustrophobia is the fear of enclosed spaces, which in the world we live in is something that can be very hard to avoid. For example, you might think of a closed space like the foundation of a home that people sometimes have to crawl into in order to get a job done, or an alley, or a tunnel in certain cases. But an enclosed space can be something as simple as an elevator, especially if that elevator is crowded and the person feels that they're literally trapped inside. It can get worse though. Being in a car can sometimes trigger an attack, because depending on its size and the person's ability to move or lack thereof, that could be enough to get them scared. Even wearing certain tight clothing isn't an option because of how restrictive it can make a person feel. So if you have severe claustrophobia, you're going to be looking for a way to get out of a tight space, even if it's one that's perfectly safe. Number 5. Agoraphobia In many ways, agoraphobia is the opposite of claustrophobia. Because while claustrophobia is the fear of enclosed spaces, agoraphobia is the fear of open spaces which basically means the entire world in a certain sense. To be clear, this goes much deeper than it sounds because it's not that they're afraid of being in an open space per se, but rather they view the area that is very open as a danger. As in it's something that can't be easily escaped, or a place where danger is all around you and you can't tell where the threat is. So for example, if you were to put a person with agoraphobia in an open field, they would likely constantly be looking around for a way out and to make sure that something wasn't about to get them. This is arguably one of the most crippling fears in the entire world for a very simple reason. If the anxiety and the fear is enough in the person, they'll never want to leave their house. Picture that for a second. Having such fear of what might be out there that you choose to stay inside and never experience any of what's out there in the world. Could you imagine living that way? Most wouldn't be able to, yet some do because of agoraphobia. Number 4. Chorophobia The term irrational fear is meant to define fears that honestly shouldn't make people scared, and yet do. And few fears are as justified in that term as chorophobia, the fear of clowns. What's rather curious about this fear is that about 7.8% of Americans alone are afraid of clowns, and their reaction to them can be rather traumatic to the person involved. This, of course, has spawned a series of evil clowns, as they're known, ones that are meant to prey upon the fear of them. Great examples of this include Pennywise from Stephen King's It, the Joker from DC Comics, and more. As to what really sets off people about clowns, well, it's rather unknown. It's likely their entire look with a mix of their clothing, their face paint, and more. Either way, if you have this fear, you will not be clowning around. Number 3. Chronophobia in many ways, chronophobia is a fear that the majority of people have in a certain context, because chronophobia is the fear of time passing. Now, usually chronophobia is triggered in a person by a certain state of mind. For example, depression, regular anxiety, and the fear that things are just going too fast, and thus you need to do more in order to make up for the time that you've lost. Other versions are when you look at your life and you feel that you haven't done anything, and yet time keeps passing on as if you don't matter. And that anxiety and fear mixes together to cause problems for the person. The real problem with this fear is that it's always going to be there in some way because time doesn't stop. The best way to fight it is to accept that time is constantly moving, and that you just need to do the best you can with the time you have, so you don't have regrets later on. Number 2. Anthropophobia can you guess what this particular phobia is? We'll give you a hint. If you're with a friend watching this right now, you don't have this phobia. Anthropophobia is a fear of people. To some, this might sound impossible. How can someone be afraid of all people? But it's a phobia that's real, and it can happen in ways that truly ruin lives. 
It can be a traumatic event that sets it off, or just an innate fear of people in general. And we do mean people in general because people with anthropophobia will rarely, if ever, associate with people face to face, let alone in a crowd. Even being with family, the family who raised you even, can cause you to suffer extreme anxiety. Thus, people with this condition will only communicate verbally through phone chats, written letters, or other mediums where face-to-face -face contact isn't an option. These people live in isolation, so they never have to deal with others. Number 1. Heliophobia if you were to go outside right now and look up in the sky, more than likely you would see the sun. And that alone would prove you don't have heliophobia, as it's the fear of the sun. Why would people be afraid of the sun? Well, some people fear the light that it brings, and the fear that they could get cancer from overexposure. Some people think that the sun is constantly cooking them, and thus they try and get out of it as quickly as they can. Then there are those who have a legit fear of the sun via a rare skin disease, xeroderma pigmentosa which is a condition where your skin is so sensitive to the sun that it'll burn instantly upon exposure. So for these people, being inside all the time is kind of a necessity, and that can be crippling to one wanting to experience the world. In China Animal Park in Beijing, a horrific attack happened in one of their more open areas. Specifically, a woman named Miss Sao was at Battling Wildlife World Animal Park near Beijing in July of 2016. She was driving through the area that just so happened to be a tiger enclosure. This was something that was allowed to be clear. For whatever reason, Miss Sao got out of her car to do something. But when she did, she found herself being attacked by a tiger, who not only grabbed her before getting in the car, but then dragged her into the nearby bushes. Then, to make matters worse, when her mother came to try and rescue her, a second tiger came out of the enclosure and killed the mother. Somehow, Miss Zhao was able to get away, but not before sustaining serious injuries, and obviously dealing with a great deal of grief after the loss of her mother. She has reportedly been left disabled from the incident and demanded $305,500 in compensation from the park. This should be proof to all about the dangers of being near a big cat. Many people want them as pets, but in truth, they can be very wild, and they aren't afraid of doing sneak attacks on people to get food, as this incident proves. Hopefully, this incident increased measures against similar attacks at this particular zoo. Number 8. Not monkeying around There are many animals at zoos that you wouldn't expect to be dangerous to humans for one reason or another. And one such one is the orangutan. While gorillas, baboons, and other primates look dangerous, the orangutan does not in certain ways. But just this year, an Erie Zoo employee suffered bite and puncture wounds to an arm when he was attacked by a female orangutan Saturday afternoon inside an exhibit in the zoo's main building. The zookeeper was taken to the hospital for his injuries, which were moderate, but he's expected to make a full recovery. The employee was in a corridor adjacent to the exhibit, which contained Dasa, a 28-year-old female orangutan a male orangutan, and a male baby orangutan. She's a very inquisitive orangutan and typically is not an aggressive orangutan, Mitchell said. My guess is she was inquisitive and reached out to see what she could grab and grabbed his arm. At the time of the report, it was unclear what led to the orangutan biting the zookeeper, as the victim hadn't been interviewed yet. However, the zoo promises to look into the incident and the exhibit and figure out what happened, what went wrong, and how it can be prevented in the future. And now for number seven. But first, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know which one of these you think is the scariest in the comments below? Number 7. Octopus with a Grudge This story is more lighthearted than you might expect, but it is an attack on humans of a sort. It's also one that proves you just can't predict animals. This story takes place in an aquarium, one that happened to house an octopus named Truman. Now, it's important to state that octopuses are very intelligent creatures. They know how to do multiple things, and their memories are actually really sharp. Anyway, in this aquarium that had Truman, there was a woman who'd volunteered at the facility. For whatever reason, Truman did not like this woman, and from within the confines of his home in the aquarium, he would shoot water at this lady, and only this one lady. And he continued to this no matter when or where the lady showed up. If she arrived, Truman would strike. Here's the funny twist. The lady left after a while because of college and not because of Truman. When she left, Truman became much more docile and did not shoot water at anyone else. But then one day, the lady came back for a visit, and when she did, Truman struck. You can't help but wonder what was going through Truman's head when she returned that day. Was it joy that he could shoot her with water again? Anger that she'd returned? No one could say but that octopuses could hold a grudge. Number 6. Tiger Strike 
At the Palm Springs Zoo in 2016, a zookeeper was killed by a rare tiger that was housed in their facility. Specifically, Stacy Conweiser was the victim, and she was the lead tiger keeper at the zoo, and was killed by a 13-year-old male Malayan tiger, one of four at the facility, in the contained area where the animals were fed and sleep. The curious thing about this incident was that Conweiser was not only experienced in dealing with tigers, but all indications show that she didn't do anything to provoke or harm them. In fact, she was getting ready to do a tiger talk for guests at the zoo when everything went wrong. Conweiser had worked three years at the zoo before she was killed. Her husband, Jeremy Conweiser, was also a trainer at the zoo. This was her specialty, he said. She loved tigers. You don't get into this business without the love for the animals and understanding the danger that's involved even more. He went on to talk about her connection with the tigers. I kind of referred to her as a tiger whisperer, he said. They spoke to each other in a language that only they could understand, and I can't put into words or make you understand for anyone who didn't know Stacy how much she loved these tigers and how much this zoo family loved her. OSHA would go on to do an investigation and noted that the tigers are infamous for treating any piece of land they're on as theirs, which might be why they struck at Conweiser. Number five, bear versus wolf. When you go to zoos, you sometimes see that enclosures have many different animals, and most of the time that works out quite well. But in a Dutch zoo in 2018, it turned into a fatal attack on one of those animals. One visitor was watching a water area when somewhat suddenly and randomly, a set of bears attacked and killed a female wolf, quite literally ripping the wolf to shreds. What's just as heartbreaking is that some of the female wolf pack were there and were doing their best to try and get the bears off of her via distraction techniques, but the bears didn't take the bait. The wolf died and many are shocked that it happened at all. But as the zoo noted, many bears and wolves live in similar enclosures in Europe and even travel together with no issues. So why this happened here is a bit of a mystery. A spokeswoman for the zoo had this to say, it's a piece of enrichment for the animal kingdom. What happened Monday is really a one-time incident. The animals have always lived in good harmony with each other. It's always gone well. We decided years ago to put the wolves and brown bears together. That's good for the animals. And we also see no reason to break them up now. Number four, an elephant sometimes forgets. A very common occurrence in zoos is that of an instructor teaching an animal to do certain things on command. This plays into various shows that can teach people about the animals. But in 2012, Lucy Mello, an instructor at the famous Tarragona Zoo in Sydney, Australia, found herself being beaten up by a two-year-old elephant. She was going through a routine with a young Asian elephant when, by her own words, things started to change. I asked for one simple final behavior. He offered me a slightly different behavior than the one I'd asked for, Miss Mello said in a statement at the time. I asked him again for the correct version. When he did not respond, I sensed a behavioral change in him and realized he was thinking of challenging me. Just as I was almost out, he raised his trunk and pinned me against one of the metal boards. His trunk on my chest took my breath away, which made it impossible for me to talk and tell him to stop. She did recover from her injuries, but the attack no doubt left her scarred. Number three, bear versus woman in a glass cage. This particular incident happened in a zoo where a woman was put into a glass box of sorts. It was very strong glass for the record, and then she was left there to watch a bear. The woman had a camera and was going to film the bear in regards to what it would do. But that's when things got a little hairy, because as many nature people would tell you, bears are not only strong, they're incredibly clever. Meaning that for a while, all the bear did was just wander around the glass box and attempt to see what it could do to open it. But when it couldn't figure it out, instead of just leaving it alone, it got on its hind legs and started to push it around, with the woman still inside. Needless to say, the woman was terrified, and as many videos will show you, she was screaming as the bear literally flipped the case over onto its other side, again with the woman still inside of it, and then the bear still tried to get in. Thankfully, the bear didn't, but the case still stands. What might be the most ironic part about all of this was that this event wasn't exactly fully real in the large scale. The attack was real, but the setup was intentional. Reports claim that this was all part of a Japanese game show that was going to be released, and they leaked footage of this game, which apparently is called Predator Shield, to showcase just what they were up to. While this may be standard for a Japanese game show, if you will, it's not something you yourself would partake in. Certainly not me. Bears are very dangerous, and if the bear had gotten into the glass box, it wouldn't have ended well for that woman. Number 2. Wolf Attack 
Wolves are often treated as evil in the world today because of their roles in mythology and fairy tales. And then when you hear attacks that they commit at zoos, like one time in 2012, it only enforces that fear. This happened in Kolmarden Zoo in Sweden and the victim was a zookeeper, one that had been working with the pack of wolves since they were just young pups. She followed procedure and let everyone know that she was going to do a routine exercise with the wolves. When she didn't report back in, her colleagues went to check on her and found her dead. There was no explanation as to why the wolves attacked her. Number 1. SeaWorld Don Brancho is arguably the most famous animal attack death at a zoo for a simple reason. She was killed by a killer whale that she was training during a performance at SeaWorld. It happened in 2010 when Don was doing a performance with the whale known as Tilica, and when she turned her back on him, the whale grabbed her ponytail, dragged her into the water, and then started to swing her around. By the time her colleagues had gotten to her, she was already dead. If this tale seems familiar, it's because it was the basis of the documentary Blackfish, which condemned SeaWorld's breeding program of orcas. And because of these events, the program was stopped. The history of cigarettes in the world is a very interesting thing. Not the least of which was that for a long, long time they were advertised on TV and sponsors of certain things despite the fact that nicotine and other chemicals in cigarettes were leading to cancer and various other illnesses in the users. So imagine the horror that many had when candy cigarettes came to be. Not only was this tactless given what was happening to adults, but it was basically enticing kids to prepare for adulthood by having these candy cigarettes in their mouths, as well as them pretending to be cool because they were smoking as a kid. The debate of whether to get rid of them has been a topic for the world at large for a long time. Eventually, numerous countries decided to ban them because the marketing strategies for regular and candy cigarettes were basically the same, and many didn't want children thinking they were getting real cigarettes and not the candy ones. Ironically enough, in the United States, candy cigarettes are not only still on sale, but they've beaten government bills to try and ban them. There were even false reports stating that they were banned in the United States when clearly that wasn't true. However, in countries like Australia, France, Finland, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, South Korea, and more, you'll not find these candy cigarettes, which many would say is for the best. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 8. Moam Candy If you were to look at the candy that is Moam Candy, you likely wouldn't see anything wrong. Nor would you taste anything wrong, nor would you find anything that was harmful to children later on and so on and so forth. And yet the Moam candy brand made by Haribo, which have repeatedly gotten in trouble for their candies, has a reputation that isn't stellar. But how could that be if the candy is fine? In this case, it's perfectly fair to judge the book by its cover. When Haribo made the Moam candy boxes and such, they, like many before them, decided they needed to have bright and colorful characters on it to lure kids in. Again, like many companies of various media have done before, visuals are everything in many cases. But for Haribo, the art that they put on the Moam candies were incredibly suggestive. Granted, the kids likely didn't get the joke, but the parents most certainly did. Basically, the characters were put in positions that looked like they were having intercourse. What's more, it wasn't just one image that projected this. It was a slew of them featuring various fruits in various positions that did not make parents happy. At first, the UK candy was kept the same, but as tensions rose, they eventually changed the art to feature singular characters doing things like riding skateboards and not having any two of them together. This is not something you would expect from a candy brand, and yet it actually happened. Number 7. Kinder Surprise Chocolate Eggs This illegal food might make you scratch your head in many ways, because the idea of a chocolate egg being banned in the US is a bit odd given the country's love for chocolate and Easter. But this is a specific kind of chocolate egg. All around the world, there's a chocolate treat called the Kinder Surprise Chocolate Eggs, and they're consumed by many without much issue. So what makes these eggs so bad? It's because there really is a surprise in the form of a toy. The US has banned these eggs because the toys are so small that if the child eating it isn't aware of the toy inside, they can swallow it and then choke on it, which is a major no-no, especially in today's day and age. The US has been very stalwart in their banning of these eggs, despite the fact that the rest of the world seems to love them, and about three and a half billion of them are sold each year. Weirdly, Kinder has made a different version of the eggs called the Joy Egg, and it doesn't contain the toy inside and thus will be allowed in the US. But every time it tries to bring the Kinder Surprise chocolate eggs into the country, it's made with fierce resistance and recalls. 
Number 6. Smarties What? Yeah, I know. I'm sure that some of you are going to be super surprised by this one. I know I was. Mainly because if you go into various stores across the United States and beyond, you'll likely find a bag of Smarties you can just get. The ban on these candies are very specific. Mainly, they are ones that are banned in certain school districts, one in Oregon and one in Michigan. So why the specific bans in those particular areas? Well, that would be because of the students. They had a brilliant idea that they could not just eat Smarties, but they could snort them. No, truly, they would go back into areas like the bathrooms of the schools, crush up the Smarties, and then snort them like cocaine. Likely because of the rush it gave them. Or imagined rush. What were these kids thinking? Why do they have so much free time? And the problems with doing this are numerous for all sorts of reasons, not the least of which is that it can cause problems with your brain, your lungs, including giving you asthma, and in one particular case, if you don't grind it up fine enough, you could literally have maggots growing in your nose. So in short, if you're gonna have Smarties, make sure you eat them, not inhale them. It should also be noted that there's a ban on the name Smarties because the company that owns that title is in Canada, and thus brands using that name had to change it to Rockets. Number 5. Haribo Sugar-Free Gummy Bears To be very clear here, I'm not saying that Haribo gummy bears are banned. We're talking specifically about the sugar-free gummy bears that were made by the company once upon a time. In short, they thought it was sad that people who didn't want a lot of sugar couldn't eat gummy bears, so they designed the sugar-free version to help that group out. On the surface, that seems perfectly fine, and kind of easy to accomplish. All you would need is to switch out the sugar in the bears for something that wasn't sugar, which in this case was lycassin. Lycassin's main ingredient is maltita. Maltita is what's known as a sugar alcohol, and it's a very good replacement for table sugar. It's almost as sweet and forms granular crystals and even dissolves in water like sucrose. So that sounds perfectly fine, right? Well, no, because a byproduct or side effect of having Maltita in your gummy bears is that it's known to get into your intestinal tract and mess you up big time. It'll cause cramping, it'll cause you to pass gas in an extended way, and worst of all, it'll give you a really bad case of diarrhea. The crap storm that it's caused gave Haribo a black eye, and thus they removed it from the market so that people couldn't keep getting the runs, among other things. But again, the original and true Haribo gummy bears, well, they're just fine to eat. Number 4. Candy Hearts During Valentine's Day, there are very few things that are as iconic as the candies that you would give to a crush, girlfriend, partner, and of course a spouse. From heart-shaped chocolates to candy flowers, and most iconic of all, the candy hearts that have messages like I love you, hug me, you're sweet, and more. On the surface, this all seems fine. But for one Connecticut school, they decided it wasn't as good as advertised. Mainly, the school wanted parents to help ensure that students weren't eating unhealthy foods on Valentine's Day, which included candy hearts, among other things. We are asking for parents and guardians to be sure that food products of any kind are not a part of your child's Valentine's Day card. Principal Megan Massey wrote to moms and dads, We're working to encourage healthy practices as well as manage food choices in classrooms where food allergies are present in order to maintain a safe environment. This is a very serious way of maintaining order, and other schools have apparently tried to jump into the act as well. But what do you think? I'm not so sure if this is one of the biggest nutritional issues schools are having. Have you seen school lunches these days? Number 3. Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chew Bars Hearing the name Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chew Bars isn't just a mouthful to say, it's something that doesn't give you confidence in the gee, I wonder if this is gonna taste good department. Granted, many companies try for unique names, and the company behind this chew bar was no different. Their original candy, Toxic Waste, was kind of a sour candy like Warheads, also not the best name for the record. After doing well, they decided to go and make chew bars, which is exactly what they did. The problem, though, came in the fact that the brand had a serious problem with lead. Yes, when examined by the FDA, it was found that trace amounts of lead were in the toxic waste nuclear sludge chew bars. Lead can be very useful, but in the human body, it's incredibly toxic. And considering that this was advertised for kids, well, that could be downright lethal. Naturally, the brand was recalled to help ensure that no one got poisoned. Number 2. Hippie Slippy 
The 60s were very much an age of experimentation, and as many like to note, the age of hippies, which on the surface was fine, because the hippies did bring a message of peace and love and tried to stop wars with that message. However, hippies were also known for excessive drug use, and this meant that no one would really take them super seriously. But what's most shocking of all is that to kind of bank on this trend of hippies, a candy bar was made called Hippie Sippy. In terms of function, it honestly wasn't too different from other candies that we have today. Mainly, you bite into one end of the candy and you sip the contents. Very simple, very easy to make, and very tasty. The problem? Well, due to its desire to match the hippie trend, the hippie sippy was shaped like a heroin needle, for real. Obviously, when this came to light, people were not happy. And after public outcry, the candy was removed from store shelves. You can consider this a time where the shape of candy, if you will, was more important than the actual contents. Number 1. Lollipip. There are times when you can't help but wonder, what were they thinking? And one of those times was the creation of the lollipip. The notion of this candy is exactly what you think it is. It's a hard candy that's been shaped like a pipe. What might surprise you, though, is that this isn't a creation from the 50s, the 60s, or the 70s. It was something made at the turn of this new millennium. Why? Well, because candy creators felt they needed to be more edgy in order to get people to try their stuff. So what better way than to go and make a candy that looks like a pipe? Some people even took this to the next level and tried to smoke out of the pipe because it had the shape and such. Needless to say, this wasn't a major success and was continued later on. You can technically still buy it, but it's a candy product that is best left forgotten for numerous reasons. Thanks for watching. What did you think of this look at banned candies? Have you ever tried any of them? Which of these were you most surprised by? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time on the channel.